Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Ebbett and today I've got a slightly different video where I'm reviewing Extreme PBR 2 in Blender 2.8. I'm quite excited about this because I think it's a great add-on and it will definitely make my workflow much easier and quicker. First of all, the add-on is available on the Blender Market, links in the description. The full version for 2.79 and 2.8 is just under $50, but you can get $35 ones for either 2.8 or 2.79. And I would like to quickly thank Andrew for sending this add-on to me. So let's start from the beginning. I'll get rid of my two textures that are on my plane at the moment. And at the moment, I've just got a plane and an HDRI in the background. Now, first of all, it was very easy to install. Like all add-ons, slightly different in 2.8, edit, preferences. So the edit menu this time, preferences, and then you install from the file and there's Extreme PBR2. What you do have to do is just say where all your folder and library of all the 600 or so textures are on your hard drive. In 2.8, this is automatically saved now. You can change those settings down here, auto save preferences. Anyway, onto the add-on. Now, like I've said, it's a massive time saver. The great thing about this is that I don't have to have the shading tab open. I can go to full screen mode with the control spacebar and I've got all the controls down the side here. So this is what you'll see. So the Extreme PBR2 becomes a tab on your right hand side menu. Now I have subdivided this plane so that the displacements work. There is actually a subdivide option within the menu. I've also given it a subdivision surface just to give it that extra oomph, but that's not actually necessary. But you do need to subdivide your plane or your objects, in fact, if you want the displacements to work. So let's add a texture to this. You can see at the top here you've got categories and I'm in tiles at the moment and then you can click on the picture and you'll get lots of tiles. Let's go for these funny green looking ones. Now then it says choose maps so I'm going for diffuse, specular, roughness, normal, displace but I don't need the metallic in this case. So I'll add new and you'll see it appear. At the moment it's heavily displaced and that's the first thing I'll change so that's right down at the bottom under Displace Settings, and it's on Strength 5 at the moment, so I'll change that to 1, see how that looks. And that's probably about right for that sort of subway tile look that sticks out from the wall a bit, but maybe point 0.1 would be a bit better. Let's have a look. That looks great. What we can do now is edit our displacement. So obviously we've got the strength there, but we've got things like the mid-levels, and we can change those, bring them up and down. So that's the mid-tones, the brightness, and the contrast. Contrast will obviously change the depth a bit more. So there's lots of options here that you can play with and adapt your texture. There's also this smooth factor. It's not so noticeable with this texture, so I'm just gonna change the texture. And I'll go across to something like wood or bark. Yeah, wood, wood TH. There we go, one of these sort of woody things. Yeah, maybe that one. And then I need to remove this and add the new one. And there's the wood. And it's got these very sort of pointy bits here. Oh, and it's worth pointing out that it's got shade smooth on and you can change that from within this tab again. Let's scroll down to the displacement and with a really high strength. But if I do the smooth factor, you can see it's smoothing it out. I like that a lot. <laughs> Impressive stuff. So let's carry on through. So it's got a uh, utility. So if I've got lots of textures, I can copy those textures across. The same with Control L, but this is obviously doing it within this tab so you don't have to come out and back in. This is quite nice as well. If you've got lots of materials on your object, you can remove some of them or remove all of them and so forth, purge materials for any that aren't used. So that's quite a nice feature there. And then you've got things like the brightness, which you can change and adapt. Contrast, I can really mess around with this completely. Hue, so I can give an alien look to this wood, or bark I should say. It's also, if I undo those actually, it's got an ambient occlusion. I should say that we're in Eevee at the moment, so you can see the ambient occlusion coming through there. I've got ambient occlusion turned on in the render tab, so I'll just show you that just there. I'm not sure whether it would work without that. It shouldn't do, but <laughs> maybe it does. So make sure you've got ambient occlusion turned on if you want to use that slider. You've got the BSDF settings here. So if I haven't got a metallic map, but I wanted this to be metal for some reason, I can change it across there. And it's also got options to actually apply and bake your displacement. So you can imagine what a massive time saver this is when you're doing a big scene and you quickly want to add 
PBR textures to lots of different areas and materials and objects, especially if you're doing anything like architectural rendering. Here I am playing around with the scene, which I did a while ago, but I thought I'd have a go with it in Eevee. And it's really nice just to be able to click on an object, click on a texture and be able to fiddle around with the sliders and you're there. It's also worth saying at this point that the glass textures work in both Eevee and Cycles. So if you want to set up your textures in Eevee and then do your full renders in Cycles, you won't have too many problems going to and fro. Now the other interesting thing that this can do, if I go into edit mode and select half of it, so top view, box select, and select half. And what I'm going to do is add a new material up here. So let's try something like rocks. So there's a rocky texture there. And I'll add new, and then I'll select it in here. So I've got two materials on my object. Select the new rock six, and then assign material. And that will assign it to this side. And I'll press add vertex. So that's adding a vertex group to this side. Now if I press on the tab to go back to object mode, you can see that they've got two different displacements on there. So I'm now able to mess around with the displacement on this one. So if I go down here, increase the displacement, and let's add some smooth factor to it. Smooth those rocks out. Actually, I feel like this needs a bit more ambient occlusion as well. Very nice. And that's two different textures with two different displacements on the same object. Clever stuff, really. So like I say, thank you to Andrew for sending this to me. I think it's an excellent add-on, and I'm glad to have it, and I'm sure I will regularly use it. So if you're interested, go across to the Blender Market. Link's in the description. It is, of course, worth saying that all of this you can set up yourself. It's not necessary to have an add-on, but the add-on makes it a huge amount quicker. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.